<laughs> hey everybody, Will Taylor, jazz violinist from Austin, Texas, composer, arranger. Welcome to Will Taylor Central. I'm curious if you guys have any ideas for what I should call this. This video is a video about why I love the song Don't Know Why by Nora Jones. And you could use this theoretical information. Uh, this analyzation of the tune, maybe it'll make your world better as a composer or arranger, maybe it'll give you some appreciation as a non-musician that just loves music. And i just done a video about my song, or my tune, Choro, number one. Karen always likes to correct me when I say, when I call an instrumental piece a song, because songs have lyrics, <laughs> and uh, tunes are, you know, instrumental, so... Uh, Troll number one, I was just noticing that I love the movement of a chromatic line, uh, in, and I love chromaticism, and I love gentle chromaticism, and there's a lot of examples of that, how to use chromaticism or accidentals, kind of going outside the key area, and there are lots of pop songs that do that, there are old standards that do that. And I'll give you a really quick example of one that's an old standard. And your ear can kind of hear what we call the two chord. The musicians call it the two chord. Classical musicians call it the five of five chord. And what I mean is if you key like this, even on a cheap guitar you can hear this. If I'm playing chords like this, all these are in the key. And then if you, if I go, That's the five, right? But if I go, that is outside of the key. That's called. That's what we call the two chord. And I play this back to that. And if you'll notice that this note, C sharp. Now watch. That note is part of the two chord. So. So this little beautiful little line. If I just play it by itself, it sort of outlines where the chords are going, and I, I like that. It's really beautiful. I like hearing that in songs. And if you listen to the song Tennessee Waltz, I was going to give you that example, before I get to Don't Know Why, and why I love the song Don't Know Why, uh, here's uh, Tennessee Waltz. Now, if you can tell. Da, 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 da. So first off, there's already in the melody, right? I mean, in the uh, chord structure, but underneath the melody. Now here's one. There's an outside chord. Even though I sing badly, you can hear. So there's some nice chromatic movement in the chords. So there's from here, watch. <coughs> That chord right there, it actually has a sharp one. We're in G. It's got a G sharp in there. So now watch how it goes down in half steps. Now where are we? We're right here, leading to the one. So we have this nice. All right. So that's an example of an old song that has this beautiful chromatic tone. Some of these tones are not even in the key. They're in the black keys. They're in the cracks. So the reason why I love Don't Know Why, number one, it starts, the melody starts on the, the T, the major seventh. I really don't, if you play these two tones, this, this uh, song is in the key of D. If you play these two notes together, this is what it sounds like. But in the context of a chord, Listen to the melody, and actually there's a chromatic line that goes down like this. So Nora Joan has managed to put in this incredible uh, fit, like a, a whole uh, a fifth going down in half steps. Okay? So you know the song? <coughs> Waited for... Okay, watch. I'm just going to play the chords. See if you can listen to that half step descending line that goes down and down. So, that's 
that whole half step descending thing was in there and underneath the melody so here it is I'll just sing it La -la. Back to the one. Isn't that beautiful? So listen to the Pat Metheny version of this because he reharmonizes it but still keeps that beautiful descending half step all the way through. And he'll do it sometimes he'll have a pedal point. So you have the D, right? I'll start off with, see if I can approximate it. So he's got that line in there. Let's play the first chord is a major seventh chord, right? D major seven. It's kind of hard to do on the guitar, but let's try this. With the pedal point, and then, uh huh, and then, so that's what it would sound like with the pedal point. Pedal point meaning the D underneath all of these chords. So if I were to do that in E to make the E string the pedal point, how would that sound like? So I would want to start on the major seventh, so D sharp, right? So it sound like this. Um. Right? Uh. So there's different ways you can take that half step going down, 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 and reharmonize it and have fun with it. So that's one of the reasons why I love one of the reasons why I love that song, Don't Know Why. And I think it's beautiful that that song became a big hit. Because in my opinion, a lot of the hits nowadays are don't have that harmonic sophistication in them. So what was this, 17, 18 years ago? 16 years ago, 2001, Don't Know Why, somehow. Beautiful song, beautiful harmony, <laughs> beautiful melody, beautiful lyrics, became a number one hit. So... You uh, writers out there, let's let's bring that back. Let's bring back harmonic sophistication. Now, I'm not saying that a simple melody isn't beautiful either. Like, come that font of every blessing. All diatonic tones, except missing one tone. If you know that melody, I think it's very interesting that there's one tone of the scale that's missing. You know what it is? I want to address that in one of my other videos. So thanks for tuning in. If you want to get more videos like this, uh, be please become a subscribing me uh, member at bandcamp.com. You'll get all of the videos that I'm making of this nature, plus all of the music I've ever recorded, plus access to our house concerts in Austin, Texas, and all kinds of things that I'm bringing on board. So this is a quickie little video uh, behind the scenes. I'm going to be making more of these. Let me know what you'd like to see, and we can all have fun together as a community. So thanks for watching. Share the video. Become a member, subscribing member for five bucks a month, and you get all the videos, no ads, everything. The Only the free stuff is available here on the Facebook page, but everything that I do will be available on the subscriber page, which is a private Facebook group for patrons only. So how do you do that? You go to Bandcamp. I'm sorry, you go to stringsattached.bandcamp.com, become a member, become involved, let me know what you'd like, and we're going to bring uh, lots of interviews with artists from Austin, all the artists I play with on my different gigs, interviews, behind the scenes, but only that will only be, the full versions will only be available to patrons for five bucks a month. It's a membership economy, so come on board. You guys, we'll check you later. Check out stringsattached.org for more information about our shows. Check out stringsattached.bandcamp.com to become a patron of Will Taylor and Strings Attached, and I'll be bringing more of these to you. Just let me know what you want to hear, what you want to see, and what you want to talk about. It's all about the community serving you, and we can do this together, right? All right, you take care. Love it. I think I get this thing.